Degraded man with a unscripted. Let's talk ethics for a moment. Let's put ourselves in a hypothetical, and I want all of you who watch this to put your honest comments in text to respond. Now I know uh, some of you don't comment, so I, I'll probably not see everybody do it, but I still want you to. Anyways, okay. So here's the hypothetical situation I'm going to put us all into. And I'm going to make myself the, the bad guy or good guy, depending on your view of this situation. Uh, for some mysterious reason, I have the ability to end all wars, uh, feed everybody, get rid of pollution, um, make earthquakes not happen or make them happen in such a way that nobody is hurt, uh, extend life in eternally, uh, you can choose what gender you want, you can choose what age you want, you can remember in perfect detail anything you want to, you can forget about anything that you want to, uh, and nobody will hurt anyone else, and everybody will have whatever they want instantly. I have the power of beyond what God supposedly has. Uh, because I, I literally can make the world uh, into a perfect place for all people or, or even give them a holodeck or whatever. Your wish you get it exactly how you want it. That's the ability I have. But, there is a caveat. One human being must sacrifice themselves in order for me to activate my power. The question is, do you promote the idea that nobody should volunteer for this or do you promote the idea that somebody should volunteer for this or do you yourself volunteer do the means justify the ends the end is great it's fantastic it's beyond anything we could dream of we, we have anything we could want instantly all the problems are solved uh, we can now spend our time on figuring out how to get to space hey you know what forget that we've now got wormholes we've got portals we've got whatever we've got teleporters we can go anywhere we want learn whatever we want instantly because we have this amazing genie type of God, it, which is, is basically no other word for, that has all these powers and abilities. But for whatever reason, I can't activate any of these powers without one human, just one, giving their life up, sacrificing their life in order to activate these powers. So, do you think that the ends, which is wonderful, terrific, lovely, justifies the means of one death, one person who is volunteering to die? Would you say, no, nobody do this, nobody volunteer? Would you say, hey, somebody go volunteer because I want some stuff? Or would you go yourself to volunteer? And why? What? Why would you choose that answer? Why? Why do you think that that is something worthwhile? So we can take this same question once you have answered it, and I'm going to pretend you answered it. Pause the video. Okay, uh, you answered that question. Now we're going to make it. A hundred people have to volunteer to give their lives in order to activate these powers. Now, 
I should also say that the caveat, perhaps, with these powers is that once that person is sacrificed, they're gone. They're dead. I can't bring them back. Whatever. Can't bring back dead people. Uh, but other than that, can do pretty much anything. So that, they, that they're that they actually dead and gone and that's it. So that it's a real sacrifice. Okay? So no loopholes allowed in this theoretical uh, construct here. A hundred people. Does your answer remain the same? Same thing, but now we have 10,000 people. Does your answer remain the same? Now, there's this theory, this idea, this hypothetical, that everybody has their price. That at some point, you would break, if I offered you enough money, you would do anything. That's the idea. Uh, everyone has their price. They, they, given enough pressure, given enough incentive, that you would do something that you don't want to do. And most of us reject that and wouldn't allow ourselves, theoretically speaking, to be bribed to do something we don't want to do. But we don't really know until we're in that situation. We don't really know how we would really respond. But we can, with the ethics, we can say, this is the way I ought to respond to this situation. Do the means justify the ends. No matter how great and glorious and wonderful the ends are, Somebody had to die to get that. Now you might think, well, wait a minute. We have fought wars for freedom. People volunteer to go to war. Winning the war allows us to keep our freedom. So it was good that they volunteered. But they don't want to die. They're not volunteering to die. Of course, then there are the Kazami pilots who did, in fact, volunteer to die to try to win the war. And had they been successful, they they would have been seen as heroes, and then possibly they still are seen as heroes, I don't know. But there are suicide missions that people volunteer for. This is a mission we don't think that you're going to come back for. If we win, we get freedom. So altruism plays a role. So a grenade is dropped, it's live, you jump on it, you save the lives of everyone else. Um, you sacrifice yourself for the needs of others. But what if, same scenario going back with this, I have all these wonderful powers, but somebody has to sacrifice themselves, or many people have to. Going back to that, what if I have these powers, but I'm not going to use them unless somebody sacrifices their life for me? Or, or I will not use, I could use them, but I won't until somebody sacrifices. Does that change your answer? Because my intent now is, well, I could do this, but I'm not going to until you do, until somebody volunteers to die in front of me, you know, or, or doesn't that, you know, they have to, they have to, they have to volunteer to die. They have to either commit suicide or be killed or whatever. I don't know how they're getting death, but they have to volunteer to die. Otherwise, I'm not going to do this. Does that change your answer? And our ethics, when we have these sort of hypothetical things, are put into a perspective. They, it forces us to think about things that we wouldn't think about. Is going to war justified? Well, what, what's the desired outcome? Let's say we're fighting for freedom. But how... How how much is that freedom worth? 
we humans have pretty much decided that freedom is worth our very lives and the lives of others. We don't want to be ruled in an unfair way. That seems to be the consensus among most, if not all, humans. But there are countries that are very oppressive. There are systems that are extraordinarily suppressive. There are people who voluntarily step into systems where they don't they don't have the same freedoms as other people do. Like, you can voluntarily become a Buddhist monk and give up everything you own and live that life. And that's a valid choice. Your ethics will determine if that choice is right or wrong for you to make. But when it comes to this idea that wonderful bribe requires somebody to die even if that someone is dying voluntarily and that that the person that could give you this wonderful bribe is withholding that contingent upon that person dying that says something about the person that's, that, that has this power, that has this ability. It says, ethically speaking, no matter what our answer is to how we would react to that situation, what does it say about that person that has all this power but won't give it until somebody sacrifices their life? What does it say about that person? Are they a good person or are they a bad person? Why? And does the answer to that question change your question change your answer to the other questions? Then we consider deities from any walk of any religion. Every deity is different. Every deity requires something different. Some don't require much at all. Some actually require nothing, which is the better deities in my view. I, closer to what I would think a deity would be if such a thing existed. Because if you have everything, you wouldn't need anything at all. You wouldn't need to create anything. You might create stuff just because you, just because you can, but you wouldn't need to. There, there's no, there's no need for it because you have everything, and you can do anything. But different deities have different requirements, um, and so this ethical questioning, if we apply it to the deities we can see their ethics and we can see what sort of deity would is like the interesting thing about this is that many theists have responded that the deity or god is at a level that i am not that it is not like human morality I have no way to judge it which means I don't know if it's good or bad which means I have no reason to follow what it wants me to do because if I can't determine that it's good or bad then I can't determine if following it is a good idea or a bad idea my ethics is hampered by my n knowledge being limited. So with the deities that require very little or even nothing, those are slightly better. So let's just say we have a deity that requires absolutely nothing and offers this reward for everyone and you don't have to do anything to get it. That sounds pretty cool. But that deity has a flaw because it hasn't helped us on this planet in a way that we can tell 
just giving someone something really wonderful at the end of all this mess that we have to go through doesn't make up for all the crap that you went through to get it, does it? So let's have a different scenario. Let's just, uh, uh, in fact, I'll steal a little bit from V from Vedetta, which is, I think, a terrific movie. I loved that movie. Anti-hero movie. He tortures the gal. Spoiler alerts. Sorry. He tortures the gal so that she will know what it is to be like him. She will know that they can never take away her stance, her her convictions. She won't give in. She has a power that's stronger than anything else, which is what he learned. And the only way he could teach that lesson he, he believed was to torture her, which he did. And that was wrong. And later on, she still likes him, loves him. It's kind of ambiguous, I guess, uh, or, or respects him enough to to hold to his ideas. Now, what if at the so what if somebody takes someone, tortures them for I don't know a month, and then gives them a mansion. And uh, that's fully paid for, uh, free food for the uh, rest of their life, car that's fully paid for, etc. Did that make up for the torture? Did 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 the gift that they gave them outweigh the bad that they did to them? Did that make them a good person? So these are the sort of questions that I ask of myself, and I like to ask you, my viewers, because ethics is rarely, I, I, in fact, I honestly cannot recall an apologetic or theistic website that talks about ethics. I know I've seen morality several times. I've seen the word morality talked about more than once on different web pages and in different videos. I myself, as to the best of my recollection, have never seen or heard ethics being discussed by a theist in any medium. If you know of a website or a video where a theist discusses e ethics like I just did here please link me to that because I don't want to say it's not out there because I don't know that it's not out there I should say I've never seen it and I think that that says something because ethics is required for morality ethics says this is how we ought to do this is what I should do I don't know what I'm going to do Morality is when I put it into practice. I, I either had good morals or I didn't in the end. My ethics help me to make that choice. Ultimately, I might be immoral because I went against my own ethics. Uh, you know, um, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. But I might choose the few because that person in, is special to me. And that makes me, in my view, immoral. Because my ethics dictate the most good for the most people and the least harm to the least person. So if it's a choice between the one I really love and care about and saving a lot of people, my ethics dictate I should save a lot of people. But I probably wouldn't, and that makes me do something that I would consider immoral. I would save the one I cared about the others would perish, and I'd feel horrible. I would. I would feel absolutely awful. But I would do that, even though I have these ethics that say I shouldn't do that. The goal is to get where my morality lines up perfectly with my ethics. Whether that happens or not is a different story. When theists talk about morality, 
I often hear them, it's, it's more like absolutes, absolutisms. But you can't get there without ethics. Don't kill. Killing's bad. Killing people is bad. Unless you're in a war, then it's necessary. Which means sometimes it's okay. Well, it's still bad, but it's 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 not as bad. Excuse me while I pick up things. <laughs> Unscripted. So, killing is sometimes usually bad. But sometimes killing is necessary. Isn't it? Or can we find a way that's better? We're limited. We don't have all the answers. Ethics makes us able to ask questions of ourselves and others and answer these hypothetical situations and thus form the morality that we carry with us as a conscious throughout our life. And that hopefully develops and changes and matures and gets better as we go along. But for some it doesn't ever change and for some it actually goes downhill. So, what are your ethics concerning these questions? What are your thoughts on these questions and your answers to them? And again, if you've seen something about ethics, let me know that, that Athea so talked about because I've, I've not seen it. And uh, I also wanted to ask, it, 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 I have utilitarian ethics. That is the ethic system that I have found to be uh, the easiest for me to understand and the most readily acceptable inside my brain. I, I know it and I can instantly apply it to any theoretical situation and I am striving to make that my morality. I'm interested to know if you have an ethical standard that has a name to it that you're aware of and if so what is that standard so I can look that up and learn more about that uh, and why you hold to that standard I, I, I you know so so these are the sort of things I wanted to talk about in this unscripted uh, thing and I'm waiting on someone to answer a question before I make another video but you know what I'm probably gonna just go ahead and make the other video because I don't think that they're gonna answer the question and that won't make any sense when I take down the other video so whatever catapult pancakes no this wasn't a catapult pancakes video this was a unscripted video <laughs>